Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. Today I'm going to show you how to pick up stitches along a knitted edge. Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. Yes, I'm picking up stitches along the edge of a knitted piece of fabric. This could be the button band at the edge of a cardigan. It could be the border for a blanket. You can use these techniques for lots of different reasons, but it comes up in a pattern and it says to pick up so many stitches along this piece of your knitting. And it can get confusing because you've got to make sure that the stitch count is right so that you can then proceed with the next part of the instructions. I've done this lots of times in my knitting life. Um, and I've come up with lots of different tips that I've got for you, including how to make sure that the stitch count is even, how to make sure you've got the right number of stitches on there, and if you do make a mis mistake with the number of stitches, how to fix it without unraveling all of those stitches and starting over again. So watch all the way through because I've got all of those tips for you, and I'll be back at the end to show you how you can how you can bookmark this so that you've definitely got it um, when you need it next time you're picking up stitches. Right, I'm all ready to start picking up stitches. Now, I've initiated a sample here and you can see how it looks differently on each side. I have a sample with ribbing at the base with garter stitch on one side. I've cast off at the top and down this other side it is stocking stitch, so it's open to curling. Now, a lot of times you will have this as the button border on a cardigan, say, but a lot of times you will have this, and guess what? You have to pick up stitches to create the button border after the fact. This is always an option. You can say, oh dear, I don't like picking up stitches. I'll put four stitches on the edge and always do garter stitch as I reach that edge. That's is an option. It's a great option. So if you want to do that, then try it. But if you have to pick up stitches, you will most probably, if you're knitting a jumper or a sweater or a cardigan, most probably have to pick up stitches around the collar um, to knit the neck. That's sometimes um, just a point of fact you have to do it. It's not knitted with the rest of the garment. So you need to know how to pick up stitches, whether you're doing it for the button border or not. I have measured this up and done some calculations and worked out that I need 48 stitches along this. So how do we do that? Do we just pick up our yarn and our needles and go, oh crikey, I could have fit 48 in, let's just do that. No, we do not. We do something else. And this is something that I decided to do for myself because I was fed up with getting it wrong, starting to pick stitches up and then not getting the right balance here, there and everywhere. So we have approximately 26 centimeters. Let's just double check that along the edge because sometimes the edge can feel and shape itself differently. Yeah, that's nearer 28. No, 26, 26 centimetres, okay. So what we're going to do, and the other option is to sit there and count the stitches, the count the number of rows that you've done. I do that a lot of the time, actually. So counting the rows is another option, and then we divide them up. That's what I'm trying to get to. We divide it up and use markers. Now, I bought these and I don't actually use them because they don't fit on very many needles. So as a stitch marker um, for when I'm counting stitches or something, it's not that useful because they are quite thick. But this is an idle opportunity to use this kind of thing. I'm quite easy going on this. I'm more than happy to fold it in half and say, that's halfway, I'll put a stitch marker in there. But, like I said, you can measure and you can count um, and then get it even more pinpoint accurate. And then that is halfway again, so I'll pick up another stitch marker. Um, in the past, instead of these fancy things, I've used um, pieces of thread. 
I just put them in there, tie a little knot in it, it's just a single loop, no problem. And then one more time. So the beauty of that is I have to work out picking up 12 in that first quarter. And if that doesn't go quite right, I can unravel it and adjust, or I can just slightly adjust as I move into the next quarter, depending on how close I am. I know that this first set here is six rows of ribbing and then up to this we have about seven rows, eight rows of stocking stitch. So it can be pretty pinpoint accurate, almost one stitch for every row but not quite. So we're going to get going with this. Let's start picking up stitches. I will do this in the, in the second colour. We only need one needle when you're picking up to start with and some people find it easier to pick up stitches with a circular needle, especially if it's going a long way. Um, it certainly means that you're not bunching it all up and holding it all at the same time, so that can be helpful. But certainly, if you find knitting with circular needles anyway a lot easier, then go for it. Yeah. Just start with a little end and make sure that you're knitting from the wrong side, so make sure that your hand is holding onto the yarn from the ball and not the short end. Too many times in the past have I done that. <laughs> so we really do need to get one right in the corner here. Otherwise your border is going to kind of set itself short. And quite often in patterns you will find that the ribbing at the end um, dictates, it dictates how many stitches you pick up in that first bit of ribbing. And sometimes it's a tighter connection because you need that corner to be caught. So we're going to pick up six in this first part of the ribbing. One. And what we're doing, now you can choose, you can pick up the right at the edge, which is the two strands which make up the edge stitch, or you can pick it up, so you're just picking up one of those strands. It doesn't matter, um, it just kind of feels like a hem. So if you're used to hemming and you're picking up one or two strands when you're hemming, you can decide how you're doing that there. So that's three within that ribbing. Let's tighten that up. One. And if you pierce the yarn as you go through, you may have to readjust to There we go, that's six along that ribbing. Um, there we go. And now I'm going to pick up six more towards that first marker. It just feels like knitting, but instead of using a stitch on a needle, you're using the fabric that you've got in front of you. So three more for the stitch marker, one, two, and then I'll go in that same hole as the marker was holding. Look at that, it doesn't have to be perfect, there you go. So that is, we know it's even because we have that marker in there. If we were picking up seven along here and then um, 15 along the next bit, then it would feel completely uneven but because we've split it up it makes it a lot easier now I'm going to carry on doing the same thing all the way up and then I'll show you how we start the next row Okay, so I have all my stitches picked up and not on purpose, but it's actually a very good teaching point, is I've picked up too many. I've picked up 49 stitches instead of 48. We need this one at the end because like I said, the corner is very important and we need this one at the end because that's very important as well. So what, ha what I do when I've picked up too many is I just work out, I sit here and I work out where it looks like a 
far too even compared to the rest of it. And here I can see possibly I didn't leave a gap. Um, so I'm just going to, as I knit across this next row, which I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a garter stitch border like I've done here. Um, and of course we're knitting with the blue now. I'm going to knit all the way along here. So I'm going to knit. Basically you just start knitting. All the stitches are in the needle just like you would normally knit. Uh, two more and then I'm going to drop one stitch. I'm going to drop this stitch. It's not going to do any harm. It's just going to fall out the back here. That bit of yarn is going to fall out the back and it will even up as I go through. Okay, so don't drop it at the end and don't lose this one at the um, right at the very beginning. You can drop one halfway through if you've missed that. And if you don't have enough, then you can drop the last 10 um, stitches that you've picked up and try to find 11, or you can look along the row and see where it's too loose, where there aren't enough stitches, where it looks like there are too few mixed up as you've been picking them up. And you can actually create two stitches from one. Um, let me just show you how I would do that. So from here, if I wanted to make another stitch, I would just pull this yarn here that's sitting at the back through from the front. Using a crochet hook would probably be easier. But there you go, I can just pull that through. That's another stitch and I can make that quickly and start knitting with it. Um, but I'm just going to carry on knitting. If you know, you're know you one or two stitches out, that's as easy as it can be. You can really be tough on yourself and unpick the whole lot and then have to start over. If you're picking up 100 stitches, that's you know, you're going to hate yourself. You're going to say, oh, why did I even start this project in the first place? Oh, I'm always hopeless. I'm never going to do this ever right. So don't think that you're going to do it right first time. Just give yourself those little leeways of options that you can do it again. The other option is to come across here and make a stitch as you go past on the second row. That's not a problem. Look at that, isn't that neat? Because I've been picking it up in the same place all the way along. I hope that was helpful for you because picking up stitches can be a real bind. <laughs> so I hope you picked up your stitches all right now and you're ready to go uh, with the next part of your instructions. So I mentioned earlier how you can bookmark this video so you've got it when you need it. Well, I do have a download for you. It's a PDF download you can keep on your phone, you can keep on your iPad or even your computer. And just, if it's there, you know that whenever you have an abbreviation you don't understand in a pattern, open that document and it's got links for you. Straight to my YouTube videos and all of the videos on my website. Click on the link and you'll come straight to one of my videos. to so just demonstrate it for you and you're ready to carry on with the pattern. So if you like that, then the link is in the description below. Right, I will see you next week. Do subscribe if you're not subscribed already and hit the little bell so you can get all these next jargon videos too. I will see you for that. Bye for now. Happy knitting. All of my jargon demo. Dem <laughs> all of my jargon demo. What am I talking about? All of my <laughs> Okay. <gasps> wow. Which... <laughs>